We're gonna make the most delicious pumpkin pie. I cannot wait to share this recipe with you. It's the perfect time of year, autumn, winter, Christmas time, of course, Thanksgiving. Pumpkin pie made famous by America, Canada. They love it, and actually, I love it too. So this is what you call a delica pumpkin, but you can also use squashes. Butternut squash is a really easy one to get in supermarkets. Normally, in America and Canada, they often would buy this pureed pumpkin in a tin. This is convenient, but the flavor from this is much, much better. So how do we cook this? It's really easy. Turn the oven on to 180 degrees Celsius, 350 Fahrenheit. Take yourself a little fork, give it a little prick, just a couple of times, and literally chuck the pumpkin in there, close the door, and let it cook for an hour and a half to two hours. Inside, it will go like nice and soft and gorgeous. The outside will be kind of burnt, it doesn't matter. So if you have a look at these, these are completely cooked now and cooling down. So I wanna give you a really simple recipe and method for a classic, sweet, short crust pastry. The classic bit is half fat to flour, okay? So we have 150 grams of fat, butter, nice butter. We've got 300 grams of plain flour. We're gonna give it a little pinch of salt. I'm gonna sweeten it just lightly with 50 grams of icing sugar. Now I wanna accent it with just a little bit of orange. Orange and pumpkin, really good friends. So I'm gonna take a little fine grater like this and just give it a little rub. And it smells amazing already. So we've got that there. Use your fingers. And then all we're gonna do is just rub the flour and the butter together. And it just takes like a minute and a half. So now we're gonna make a little well in the middle. And I'm gonna steal one egg here. Nice little free range egg. Crack that in there, no shell. And I'll just take a little fork and I'll just whisk this up. And once you've done that, we're just gonna stir it in to the pastry like that. I don't wanna be kneading it like bread because that's just gonna make it firm and hard. We don't want that. So look, you can see it's just coming together. It's just beautiful. Now, you could wrap that up and you can put that in the fridge and let it relax, absolutely. Fantastic. Um, I'm actually not gonna do that today because I'm gonna cheat and I'm gonna get on with it just to show you that you can. You would normally, once you've let it rest, sort of roll it out with a rolling pin, bit of flour, you can do all that. I wanna show you that it can even be simpler, right? I'm gonna just take a little bit of this pastry slice it and then press it into this mold, like this, right? Probably slice it about just under a centimeter thick. And this is very simple. I'm just using my fingers to press out and join these little slices and push it up the edge. And it might not be perfect, but I like all the little notches, all the little imperfections. I like the fact that we're not trimming off the edges, okay? So that's that, right? Super easy. I can smell the orange, it's gonna be amazing. So that bit is done. I wanna use this pumpkin and I wanna puree it and get it really, really smooth. If I just cut this in half, you can see that it's soft. And if we get in there, look at the color. I mean, it's extraordinary. Just take a little bowl and get the seeds out. These seeds, by the way, you can just kind of wash them off, toss them in a bit of oil, salt and pepper and roast them. But what we want is the flesh. We don't want the skin and we don't want the seeds. So we'll remove those. Right, let's get on with this. So what I'm gonna do is get my food processor and we want 400 grams of beautiful cooked pumpkin in there. Then I'm gonna add 175 grams of golden caster sugar in and 100 milliliters of double cream goes in as well. So we've now taken pumpkin that is traditionally sort of savory and it's now in the world of sweet and we can go further with that delicious sweetness with a little help from some friends here. First up, let's start with vanilla. So I'm gonna go three teaspoons of vanilla paste. I'm then gonna use three quarters of a level teaspoon of cinnamon. Don't go mad, right? Cinnamon's quite powerful. Then I'm gonna go for half a teaspoon of ground ginger. This is allspice. I'm just gonna go for a quarter of an allspice. And then another great one, nutmeg. Just take that fine grater again and just do 20 little gratings. This is really gonna make this delicious. Now, three eggs. So we're gonna split the eggs two ways. So we are gonna just crack the egg and put the egg whites into a nice large bowl that we can whisk these eggs and then keep these lovely yolks here. Okay, so this is gonna go into my machine. Look at that color. Okay, while that's doing its magic, a nice little pinch of salt and just whisk it up until it's nice and stiff. And you know when it's stiff, when you can hold it over your head and nothing happens, Woohoo! Okay, we're good to go. We have our lovely cake mix 
and we'll pour that into here. Look at the color. Now we want to fold in the egg whites. So from the outside to the inside. So really go around the rim and just get all of those bits of egg whites. And even though it's not cooked, I can smell all the spices. Look at that. <laughs> okay, so in this recipe, we are not going to bake this pastry case blind, right? We're going to have it raw, we're going to have it raw, and we're going to cook it in the oven. So get your oven preheated to 180 degrees Celsius, which is 350 Fahrenheit. Look at that, heavenly. Very importantly, we're going to put this beautiful pie, look at that, right? That's going to go right on the bottom of the oven, right? I know that's a wood oven, ignore that. In your oven, put it on the bottom, not on a shelf, on the bottom. That way you're going to get max temperature under that pastry. We're going to cook it for around 45 minutes and that's going to be utterly delicious. What's going to happen is this will souffle up a little bit and it will look amazing. As it cools down, it will just sag and it might even crack and it's all going to be gorgeous. And then I'm going to show you how to serve it with the most delicious pecan nuts that we're going to caramelize in maple syrup. Right, let's cook this. It's, it smells amazing. Okay, so this has had, I'd say, just under 50 minutes. Look at that. Such a lovely, rustic pumpkin pie. Look at the color. Really, really autumnal. Smells amazing. Okay, so now what we want to do is let that cool down so you can slice it beautifully. I like to do that onto a little cake rack like this. Look at that. Right, so let that cool down. And now I want to show you how to make the most incredible praline of pecan nuts with maple syrup. I'm going to get a pan on. So maple syrup, you know, I am always thinking about Canada, North America. I'm thinking about, you know, all those gorgeous flavors, pumpkin. Um, pecan is a really nice nut to play with. Have a little look at this. Of course you can do other nuts, but it just feels a little bit more right to use pecan nuts. Delicious. So four or five tablespoons of lovely maple syrup goes in. We're gonna bring that to a boil. And then as it boils, it is gonna to start to caramelize a bit more and thicken a little bit more. Now, when you do that, it goes a little bit darker. You're concentrating the flavor more, but also this is currently a syrup, but when we're kind of evaporating sort of moisture from this, you're gonna make basically like a little caramel that's hard, crunchy. So I'm gonna put a couple of handfuls of the pecans into here and cook that into them like this. And just for like a minute or two, we're gonna reduce this down so it's a nice caramel. Get a tray, get some greaseproof paper. Just have a little look. You see how dark that's got? So when you're doing anything around the world of caramel, do not have kids running around, right? It is hotter than boiling water, okay? So we'll use a metal spoon, not a plastic one. And while it's hot, we'll move it around like this and it will cool down pretty quickly. And as it cools, because you've reduced the syrup, it will cool like hard. So look, let that cool down. I've got a nice little kind of, I think a nice vibe to have with this pie. I'm gonna take that orange that we use the zest for the pastry. And I've got here some cranberry sauce. So what I'll do is just squeeze in the juice of half of that orange and just let it down, right? And I think, this is really nice to have on the side with the cream and almost ripple it through. It's gonna be a good thing. So, that's gonna cool down. I'm gonna wash this up and then we're gonna serve up. While that's chilling, how about giving us a little bit of love? Click the like button and even subscribe. Oh, and remember to turn on that notification bell so you know what's happening. Now, back to the recipe. So this has cooled down nicely. Uh, a little tip, so if you get a bowl that's nice and sturdy, then in theory, if I put that on there like that, that falls off like that, very dramatic. Uh, so we can take that off and remove this. And then what I can do is pop this on the board and get my knife just underneath that little bit of the mold like that. Carefully run your knife around the base and carefully just move it out so it's all lovely and protect it. Look how lovely that tart looks. It's a really nice, rustic tart. I love it. I love its imperfections. I love the little ridges. I love the little cracks. 
it feels really, really hearty. <laughs> Smells amazing. So um, one thing to go with this is I've got some double cream here that I've taken the liberty to just whip. I'll put some in there like that and then a little bit of that orange and cranberry sauce. So I'm just going to fold that through. <laughs> it's going to be good. So now it comes on to our little brittle here. So this is nice and cool and you can see that it's turned into kind of like a giant thing. So it's still a little bit warm. When that gets cold, that'll snap. So you can just break this off. And then what you can do over here is just chop it up. That's sensational. So we've got pecan chunks. We've got pecan brittle. We've got our lovely cranberry and cream ripple. And then here, we've got that amazing pumpkin pie. Straight into the middle, all the way down. Let's do a nice little slice. Oh, it's pretty good. So there you go, beautiful. And then we can take a few of these beautiful bits of caramelized pecan here. And look, we've got the brittle here, but that can just go to the side, look at that. Oh. And then we've got our little ripple of cream and cranberry. Right, here we go. Little quiet moment in my favorite place. Mmm. Crumbly pastry, soft, velvety, fluffy pumpkin pie filling. Just so many textures, so good. So guys, what are you waiting for? Homemade pumpkin pie, spiced up, go on. Have a go.